I mean, you can't make this stuff up, man. At this point, the Seattle Kraken are just straight up trolling Shane Wright with what's going on here. I mean, get a load of this, okay? I, I, as if it couldn't get any crazier here. Um, if you haven't seen it already, which hey, it's pretty fresh off the press, uh, from the 32 Thoughts podcast yesterday, Elliot Friedman revealed why. Shane Wright fell to fourth in the NHL draft. It's something we've been asking ourselves. A lot of people have theorized that it's because of his attitude, maybe the bad attitude, the cockiness that he displayed a little bit of in the stare down against the Habs, uh, alleged stare down against the Habs, and in the interviews where he was saying that he deserves to go first overall and stuff like that. But a tweet from NHL Watcher yesterday says, Friedman on the 32 Thoughts podcast asks why Shane Wright fell to fourth in the draft. And it's because he didn't play, referring to the virus we all know of and how that really hindered his play. He didn't get to play enough games. And continuing the tweet here, during draft interviews, teams were grilling him on why did you not go overseas to play? Keeping right with Seattle where he doesn't play much doesn't seem like an ideal situation. I mean... You can't make this stuff up. First comment with the most likes. No way they were grilling him for not playing. And now they're not playing him. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, it's true. You can't. I just... I feel bad for the kid. I mean, don't you? At least a little bit. I mean, I know a lot of Habs fans are saying, Nah, we don't care. Whatever. Go for it. And he's an NHL player. He's making money. Who cares, man? Don't feel bad for him. But, dude... This is his dream. It's his dream to be coming out here and playing in the National Hockey League. And clearly, in Shane's case, being a star, a top player in the National Hockey League. And right now, he's not even getting the chance to do that. Which, I mean, you gotta feel bad for the kid a little bit in that way. I mean, seriously, dude, how do you not? I mean, after all this talk of him being first overall for years, I remember him playing for the Don Mills Flyers in like 2017 or 18. And still, even then, people were saying, oh, first overall, Shane Wright, 2022, book it. It's going to be great, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't happen for him. And ever since then, it's been such a downhill slope. And I'm seeing so many Habs fans just troll any type of comment section. You see it even in these tweets about Shane Wright because of Slavkovsky. Um, and his power play goal the other night and how he's doing. But come on, Habs fans, at least even just a little bit, you've got to feel for Shane just a tiny bit here, right? I mean, come on, it's getting really off the rails here. Friedman also went on to talk about how Kingston should be and are expecting Shane Wright to possibly be coming back to them in the OHL. And if Kingston does get him back with the Frontenacs this year from the Seattle Kraken, they're most likely going to trade him apparently to see what kind of value they can get for Shane Wright. Um, I don't even, I seriously don't even know. Is he going to play World Junior? Like, what's going to happen here? It's just his whole NHL beginning has been flipped on its head from the moment the Montreal Canadiens said, from Slovakia at the NHL draft, Shane Wright's NHL life has been flipped on its head, and he's been trying to recover and tread water before he can even start swimming upstream as an NHL player here. And it just keeps getting crazier. And of course, it's picking up more steam with more media outlets. It started with Yahoo Sports, a few Seattle outlets saying, hey, what's going on with Shane Wright and these healthy scratches and his ice time? But now, it, I mean, it's being talked about on Hockey Night in Canada, in one of the biggest hockey podcasts in the world. I mean, it's picking up real heat, real steam, and the Kraken, they're going to have to make a move about this sooner or later. And that's why I want to talk about this before it actually ends up happening, because after it happens, then we're just going to know. But until then, whoa, is this getting dramatic here? And I mean, there's been so much drama happening in the NHL lately between the Shane Wright saga, between the Mitch Marner saga and everything happening with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Lots of big drama stories here happening in the league lately. Um, but this one, throw the kid a lifeline, please. He's drowning. Help him out, please. Do something for him here. At least, I mean... Not even like, okay, well, if I get sent to the OHL, at least I know that I'll be in Kingston for the year. The dude, even if he suspects that he might be sent to the OHL, he doesn't even know where he's going to play because he thinks he's probably going to get traded. Doesn't even know where he's going to spend his year. That uncertainty, that's got to sting. It's got to be 
anxiety inducing like seriously man i feel for the kid he's only 18 like help him out a bit here somebody i wanted to see him succeed a little bit here um when the Habs ended up not drafting him, I was full on Team Slavkovsky. I mean, it, it went full on Twilight, Team Slav versus Team Right. Um, but now I'm feeling for the kid. I really want him to succeed. I want him to do well. I'm going to the game on Tuesday, Seattle Kraken against Calgary Flames. I'm praying I get to see Shane Wright play live there. That would be awesome. If I do, I'll update you guys on that. I mean, dude, I should rename this channel to Shane Hockey with how many Shane Wright videos I've been making seriously, but it's just so interesting. It's fascinating, and a lot of people are just gripped to this situation, so we'll see what happens on this one. You guys know I'll keep you updated, all right? So if you want to know more about this, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, the whole deal. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.